Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on PubSomp MTG, and today I'm going to be discussing Maha if Feathers Knight. There's a lot of buzz around this commander because, let's just be real, it's quite powerful. There's a lot of things about this that I absolutely like. So let's read what it does. So for 3 and 2 black, it's a 6-5 body with flying and trample. It's an elemental bird. It does have a ward discard a card. Creatures your opponents control have base toughness 1, and I don't know why I read that in such a random order, but that's how my brain works sometimes. Besides that point, this is basically a world effect. Creatures your opponents control have base toughness 1, and that's quite interesting because in a way, I feel like a lot of these elementals in this set have some kind of world effect like Ygra Eater of All. It has that effect of making all creatures into foods. But in that aspect, it does make sense. These are very overwhelming powers of nature in Bloomboro specifically. But correct me if I'm wrong, Maha is the leader of the Calamity Beast. I'm pretty sure it is because obviously it looks very menacing looking at that art alone. So in this video, we're going to be discussing Maha and how to build around her. So let's get us started. So already in a lot of discussions, people have talked about Maha's ability of giving your opponent's creatures toughness 1, and honestly it's quite abusable in a lot of different strategies in Mono Black. Some examples I would like to highlight is Ascendant Evansar, Knight of Souls Betrayal, and Caravec the Spiteful. I don't necessarily need to go into great detail of how great these are with our commander, because all our opponent's creatures are going to have toughness 1. These are static effects, and with these on the battlefield, they're a static effect with all creatures have minus 1, minus 1. Of course, that's all in their specific way. Ascendant Evansar does have non-black creatures get minus one minus one and Karabek doesn't affect himself other creatures get minus one minus one these are just great overall picks mainly because our commander does have that world-like effect where all creatures have toughness one that are on our opponent's side so just making them get minus one will basically have them go to the graveyard immediately essentially so that's cool and all but just remember a lot of people may not want to play against this type of strategy because a lot of people do play creature decks and not a lot of people want to get their creatures removed like permanently essentially maha could be potentially assaulted dude commander if you do have these world effects on the battlefield but if you have those one-time effects like etb effects i feel like that would be more okay some examples of etbs would be massacre worm harvester of misery and meat hook massacre these are all options for you just to take advantage of each of these have pretty good effects outside of just giving your creatures minus something minus something massacre worm does have that ability whenever a creature an opponent controls dies that player loses two life you could cycle harvester of misery target creature gets minus two minus two until in a turn so if you need that individual removal you have that option there. And the Meat Hook Massacre has a great ability whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain one life, and whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, so you get that life loss, life gain. And if your opponents are getting extra greedy with card advantage or card draw on their turns or other turns, you can take advantage of Orcish Bowmasters. It has the ability of flash, and when it enters the battlefield or whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, Orcish Bowmasters deal one damage to any target, then a mass orcs one. So you either love it or you hate it. This is definitely a CDH card more if anything else, but of course this can be pretty good in this deck specifically if somebody has a rustic study on the table you could just ping them for whatever just so that you could kind of keep them in check in their life total or with their creatures on the battlefield another card i absolutely love in this deck is noxious field this is an enchant land enchant land has tap this land deals one damage to each creature and each player so this is a constant way of removing creatures on the battlefield without giving the salty feeling to your opponents because if you have like a caravec on the battlefield it's just going to stay there forever but this is a way to kind of mitigate that a little little bit not too much honestly but if you really want to dive into the salty nature of this deck you could take advantage of Cormus Bell and Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth this is a classic combo making all lands into swamps and because of that Cormus Bell does read all swamps are 1-1 creatures that are still lands so your opponent's lands are going to be swamps ours are going to be two and they're going to be one ones so if you have one of those effects like Masker Worm you could just make all your opponent's creatures go away and that it does include their lands most likely you're not going to have any friends to play with after but that's the price you pay for playing this deck 
deck. You can get a lot of benefits out of your opponent's creatures dying, kind of like a husband signing for a million dollar life insurance policy. You'll get all the benefit of your opponent's creatures dying and your opponents will get any benefit. So let's first talk about Spymaster's Vault. This is incredible. It's basically a check lane. You check for a swamp, it enters the battlefield on tap. If you do have a swamp, you get tap for a swamp and you can pay a swamp and tap a target creature you control connives X, where X is the number of creatures that died this turn. So if you draw a lot of cards, discard a lot of non-land permanents, we have that ability of buffing up our commander, swinging for commander lethal potentially. So this is just great card selection in my opinion. I do also really like Clackbridge Troll. This is excellent in the deck. It does have Trample and Haste with an 8-8 body. It does enter the battlefield making 301 white goat creature tokens for our target opponent. After a couple board wipes, most likely they're not going to have any creatures, so we're going to swing away uncontested potentially. But if they do, they can sacrifice it if they don't want Clackbridge swinging in for 8 damage. And if they tap it, we get a gain 3 life and draw a card. So either way, this is going to be a win-win for us. And if creatures are dying on each turn, Morbid Opportunist is going to be a great opportunity for us to draw a bunch of cards. Whenever one of our other creatures die, draw a card. This ability only triggers once each turn. So unfortunately, it doesn't trigger every time a creature dies. It only happens once each turn. But if a creature dies every single turn, we're going to get three cards, maybe four. If you want a better card advantage engine, look no further than Massacre Girl, Known Killer. Creatures you control have wither. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if a toughness was less than one, you draw a card. Oh, and would you look at that with Maha? It makes all our opponent's creatures have toughness one. So this is obviously going to get us a lot of card advantage. The more creatures our opponent's control die. This is easily one of the best cards you could take advantage of in the game for sure. Because our commander does have War Discard a card, let's take advantage of cards like Oppression and Aklazad's Deepest Betrayal. And the main reason why I wanted to bring these ones up specifically, you could add any kind of discard engine in the deck making your opponents discard a cards, but our commander does have War Discard a card. If our opponents don't have any cards in their hand, it's basically going to have Hexproof. With oppression, it's going to affect us too whenever a player plays a spell, that player discards a card from their hand. This is just a way to make sure that a lot of people don't have cards in their hands so that we could just make sure we could swing in with our commander and we don't get removed out of the battlefield with that. And with Aklazots on the battlefield, when it does swing, each opponent discards a card for each opponent who can't. You draw a card so it's card advantage. And we can make bats on the battlefield if opponents discard lands. So I don't have a whole lot of discard cards in this deck specifically. I just wanted to highlight them a little bit so that we could give a little bit more protection for our commander when our opponents don't have any cards in their hand. But now with no creatures on the battlefield, what are we going to do to win the game? There's a lot of ways we can take advantage of our commander, mostly because it's flying and trample. We can go into a little bit of a Voltron theme if we wanted to. So if there aren't any creatures on the battlefield, you could just swing in uncontested and have a lot of equipment and auras attached to your commander so it could get extra huge and go for commander lethal damage. So let's amplify the damage of our commander by using Fire Shrieker that gives our commander double strike, Nightmare Lash that will give equipped creature you control plus one plus one for each swamp you control. We are in a mono black deck and if we have Urborg out on the battlefield, we're going to have all the swamps we want to buff up our commander. And if we have Talaran Soul Cleaver attached to our commander, it will have vigilance whenever another artifact or creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on equipped creature. Because creatures are dying left and right with one toughness, and if we have one of those effects to give a minus one minus one or minus two minus two, we can constantly put one one counters on our commander, swinging in for commander lethal potentially. To give our commander a little bit more protection, we could take advantage of Mithril Coat, Lightning Greaves, and Commander Plate because our commander is a monocolor commander with black. It has protection from the other four colors with commander's play and give us plus three plus three lightning greaves is just going to give our commander shroud and haste mithril coat it just in a pinch if somebody does try to remove our commander and they pay into that ward cost we just flash it in and say psych our commander has indestructible of course life is just a resource so hatred is going to be an excellent card in the deck for three and two black pay x life target creature gets plus x plus zero until in a turn you can play your commander and then later on play hatred giving your commander plus x plus zero and you can pay as much life as you want to get one opponent out of the game of course that all depends on if they have a creature with flying if they block with it but again it does have trample so we can just trample over that card that they try to block with and go for maybe commander lethal damage potentially we could also just play vorpal sword equipped creature gets plus two plus so and has death touch which is a good combination with trample by the way but it does have that activated ability until in a turn vorpal sword gains whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player that player loses the game obviously it does cost eight mana so it's pretty hard to get to that but if you do have that you have that option with maha it does have have the evasion of flying and trample we could swing in then pay into that activated cost make a player lose the game repeat the process a couple times and win the game as a whole so i know technically you don't have to go with a voltron strategy with your commander but i feel like it would be a good fit because a lot of creatures are dying on the battlefield you could just go ahead swing away with being uncontested and go for commander lethal damage potentially with a couple players so that's why i went with a voltron theme 
So with that said, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Maha It Feathers Knight. This is one powerful commander. I feel like it's going to be a better card than the 99, but as a commander itself, it can be pretty powerful with some cards that I mentioned previously. But I would love to hear down below, what are your thoughts and opinions about this commander? Do you plan on building it yourself? Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. With that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.